Hello again. Quick chat for this one, but be less than 10 minutes, but a really valuable one. Now, many projects configure their controllers using exactly the techniques we saw on the previous chapter. But there is an easier way, added from Spring 2.5, that cuts down on the XML that we need to write. The technique is called Automatic Controller Scanning. We're going to see how this technique works in this chapter, and also we'll use auto wiring to automatically set up the dependencies on our controller. Now the approach we've just followed was a very basic and simplistic approach so that you could see all of the moving parts of Spring working. However, in more recent versions of Spring, you've been able to cut corners to get things working far more easily. And we're now going to look at how you can configure a controller in a much easier fashion. Instead of declaring the controller in the Spring XML, like we've been doing here, you can get the controller to be automatically discovered and configured by the dispatcher servlet. And this is called automatic component scanning. It's a feature that's been in Spring since 2.5. You can do this automatic discovery of spring beans for not just controllers, you can do it for services and DAOs and so on. And we do cover how to do that on our Spring 3 upgrade course. I'm going to show you how to automatically discover controllers here. And instead of this long-winded XML declaration, we can simply not bother. We'll take that out completely. So OK, we've only saved about three or four lines of XML here, but before long we're going to have lots and lots of controllers, so that's lots and lots of XML that I've saved. Well, at the moment, of course, our code is broken. If we rerun the build, everything appears to work OK, and the application has deployed successfully. But once we're back in our browser, I'll need to correct that URL from my example before. Now we try to visit viewallbooks.do. And in fact, we've got the HTTP 404 again. And looking on the console, it's simply saying there is no matching controller because we haven't declared any in our XML. But we can resolve the problem by telling Spring to scan for components, in this case, all of our controllers. We do it using this line of XML here. It's the context colon component scan directive. Now this tag tells Spring to check through all of the Java classes we've written and to find out which of them are controllers and then to automatically instantiate them. Well, actually, it doesn't check all of our classes. We give it a base package to start from. Now, we could get it to look in every class, but in our case, we just want it to look inside the com virtual pair programmers dot control package. Now, notice to make this work, you will need the full schema description that you can see here. Now, that's absolutely horrible. Don't ever try to type that in for yourself. I've simply copied that from the Spring Reference Manual where they describe Spring MVC. And it's also part of the file that I supplied to you. So we do need a rather ugly line of XML here. But once that's done, even when we have 140 controllers, we won't need to add anything further to this XML file. So then in Eclipse, we'll Add that line in, context colon component scan. And we need to supply the base package. And in our case, it's com.virtualPairProgrammers. In fact, I could stop there. That would search through all of the packages that I have. I may as well just go a level down since all of my controllers are going to be inside the control package. Now, that's not quite enough. One further step is Spring needs to know which of the classes in the system are actually controllers. I might have 10 classes inside that package, but only three of them are controllers. And to do that, 
I have to add an annotation to the top of my controller class. The annotation is wonderfully simple. It's the at controller annotation. Now, as always, this is from the Spring Framework, so it will need to be imported. Control Shift and O, and just to verify in our import list, there it is from Spring Framework. And this effectively marks this class as being a controller. And when the component scanning runs, this class will automatically be sucked in to the container. Now, one thing we've lost is remember, we also need an instance of the book service to be injected into this controller. And up until now, we've been configuring that via the property tag in the XML. Well, we've lost that now. So by default, Spring won't know that this attribute here is a dependency that needs to be injected. So I don't know if you've seen this before, it was added in Spring 2.5, and it's the auto-wired annotation. If you haven't seen it before, we do cover it in detail on our Spring 3 upgrade course. But you don't really need any theory. When Spring encounters this annotation via that component scanning, it knows it has to go and search for a bean of type book service which it then automatically injects in. And you don't even need the set method anymore because Spring uses reflection to do the injection. Again, I'll need to import that, Control Shift and O, and there it is once again from the Spring framework. So I hope you can see here that what's happened is, despite having to add a couple of annotations, the whole controller class has now become very, very small and tight and clean. And similarly, we need almost no XML to make the controllers become live. And of course, I can now go forward and add loads more controllers without ever having to touch this XML file again. Just appear to have a compile error in here. I think it's because I haven't saved the class, that's all. So that's all very impressive, only if it works. So we'll rerun the build again. And as always, we'll need to check the Tomcat console once the build is run. And when the console ticks over, we can see there, there are no nasty Java exceptions. And very importantly, there's the info. It's mapped the URL path for you all books onto the correct handler. So it did that automatically using those annotations. Let's get back into the browser then, and we'll refresh that URL, and wonderful, there's our use case fully up and running. So we had to do quite a lot of work to get there. I had to show you both the automatic way of doing things, and the, if you like, the manual longhand way of configuring your controllers, because your projects you work on might use either approach or either technique, and I don't know which you prefer. Certainly, from this point onwards in the course, we're going to use the automatic controller scanning. It's much quicker to write your controllers. So, a short and sweet chapter, but very valuable indeed. By using a single directive, the context component scan directive, in the XML, we can remove a large amount of XML wiring. Now, I must say, this is controversial. Many projects stick to the longhand approach because it gives you the most control. Speaking personally, I prefer the automatic controller scanning, simply because controllers don't usually have very complex wiring requirements, and so, it's easier to make it automatic. And don't forget that even if your controllers are being automatically scanned, your business objects, services, and DAOs can still be manually wired. It's up to either you or, of course, the project you're working on as to which way to go. Now, for simplicity, we're using the automatic approach for the rest of this course. 
but do feel free in your own work to manually configure the controllers if you prefer. Well, all we've done so far is write a basic use case that doesn't need any parameters. So, in the next chapter, we're going to see how to pass parameters to your controllers and also how to handle sessions. Have a good long break first.